Hello and welcome to the Surrey Supernatural YouTube channel. My name is Graham and I run the Surrey Supernatural Facebook group. Today I will tell you about the story of Pearl Bryan. Pearl Bryan was born in 1874 to parents Alexander and Susan Jane Bryan. They lived in Greencastle, Indiana in the USA. Alexandra was a well-respected farmer in the area and him and his wife had 12 children together. Pearl was doted on by parents even with 11 other children. Pearl attended Greencastle High School and was described as a pretty girl with many admirers, but she never pursued a relationship with any of them. When Pearl left school, she became a Sunday school teacher and she was soon seduced by a young man called William Wood. William was the son of a local Methodist minister. Pearl became pregnant and claimed the baby was William's, but it was later rumoured to be the baby of a man called Scott Jackson. But he maintained that he didn't have any relations with Pearl until after she was already pregnant by William. She kept the pregnancy a secret from her friends and loved ones, as at the time it was not common practice for a woman to have a baby outside of marriage and it would be frowned upon. Pearl was confused and unsure what to do about the pregnancy, but when she told William that she was pregnant, he convinced her that abortion was the best idea. William made arrangements with his friend Scott Jackson to carry out the procedure. Scott Jackson had moved green cars from New Jersey with his mother to be near the relatives. They were a well-to-do family and Scott was a student at Ohio College of Dental Surgery in Cincinnati. On the 28th of January, Pearl told her family that she was going to see a relative in Indianapolis, but she actually went to Cincinnati to meet up with Scott. He was at school and had been contacting Pearl via letters he sent to William. It is believed these letters might have contained prescriptions for drugs to help her have a miscarriage, but they didn't work and she remained pregnant. Scott told her to meet him in Cincinnati. Pearl believed that Scott planned to marry her to keep from the shame of having a child out of wedlock. She arrived in Cincinnati and checked into the Indiana house under her sister's name. Scott arranged for Alonzo Wallin, who was his roommate, to join him and Pearl at the local tavern. A worker there would later testify that while the three were there, Scott slipped something into Pearl's drink. This was believed to be cocaine, which was found in the system during the autopsy. It is thought that he used this to help induce a miscarriage. Scott then decided he would use his dental tools to carry out the abortion, but Scott's medical skills weren't as good as William believed. After an hour, poor Pearl was lying there, frightened and bleeding. This is when this story takes a dark and sinister turn. The three of them left Cincinnati and fled across the Ohio River to the town of Kentucky, where Scott led them to a secluded spot. They decided to behead Pearl using dental implements. During the autopsy, the doctor discovered a cut to be clean. Due, clean. Due to the blood on the leaves, it is that scene it was established that Pearl was still alive when she was decapitated. On the 1st of February, a farmhand called John discovered Pearl's body in some bushes behind what is now known as the YMCA. Police were called to the scene where they found a headless body. They searched the area, but there was no sign of the head. Pearl's body was later identified by the shoes that she'd been wearing. Police contacted the shoemaker who confirmed that Pearl had purchased the shoes. Police interviewed people close to Pearl and learned about the relationship with Scott. On February the 5th, Scott and Alonzo were arrested, but they claimed to have an alibi. When this was disproven, they tried to minimise their involvement by blaming each other for the Fisher's act. Police decided the pair had worked together to murder Pearl when the abortion attempt had failed. The crime attracted considerable attention at the time. People travelled miles around to view the crime scene, even taking souvenirs such as branches that had splattered into Pearl's blood. A store near the courthouse distastefully sold Pearl merchandise. Scott and Alonzo were both sentenced by hanging. On March 20th, 19, 1897, Scott and Alonzo's execution was carried out. Carried out. According to reports, even men's neck broke and they were in fact strangled to death. It was later late rumoured that while on the gallows, Alonzo gave the evil lies line and said he would come back and haunt the area. Pearl's head has never been found to this day, but there are rumours of what actually happened to her head. One rumour was that the pair had burned her head in a furnace at the dental college. Another was it had been dumped in the sewers or water around the area. The most widely lead rumour is that Scott was involved in occult rituals at Slaughterhouse which is now known worldwide as Bobby Mackey's nightclub. Scott might, may have used the head in a ritual and then disposed of it in a well at a slaughterhouse. Let us, let us know what you think happened in the comments below. 
Thank you for listening. Please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you later. Bye paranormal peeps. Are you afraid of the dark? Are you scared?